Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Stand up on your feet as you receive the ministry of God's servant Bishop David O. Abiyoye. Lift your hands and worship the King of Kings. Wave him, honor him, adore him, magnify him, magnify him, glorify him, glorify his name. Keep giving it to Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody rejoice in the Lord. Come on, give God a very big hand. He's worthy. He's worthy. No one like him. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have given thanks. Is somebody saying a very strong amen? amen? We are here to receive the strength of the Lord. Shout a strong amen. amen. To God be the glory forever. Amen. Join me one more time. It's never too much thanking, praising, and worshiping God. With your two hands above your head if you can. Just tell him how much you love him again. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. I love you, Lord. I give you glory. I worship your majesty. Glory, 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 glory to your name, Lord. Lord, Sandele remenanda la barananga nda katanda la basu sobre di manda katatari. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. Heavenly Father, we stand before you tonight. Acknowledging you as our strength, our source of everything we'll ever need. And the assignment you've committed to our hands as individuals, as your ministers, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you because ever since this minister's flaming fire conference commenced, your presence has been with us here on ground and online, everywhere people are connected across the globe. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your servant and his wife whom you have used and are still using to host this conference. Thank you for the vision of gathering your people together and the effect of the same over the years. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. And for all your servants you've used in the course of this conference, Evangelist Jonathan, our dear brother, Pastor Ebiome, we want to thank you for using them mightily to be a blessing to all. And several others that you have used, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. And now, O oh Lord, we pray that you will walk through your humble vessel that is here before your people tonight and let every soul be blessed. Amen. And all who believe they will be blessed, say a very strong amen. amen. Help me stretch your hands, if I may borrow Pastor Paul's word, and shake seven people all around you and tell them you are blessed, you are blessed. I hope I tried. <laughs> Glory to God. In Jesus' precious name. You may please be seated. And make sure you are not the last person to be seated. Thank you, Jesus. 
I want to first of all appreciate the privilege God has given to me to be in this Flaming Fire Conference for Ministers 2024 and the honor of being considered to minister to us in this conference. It's an honor that I don't want to take lightly. I want to appreciate God's servant, Pastor Paul, and his wife for creating this platform. And for receiving my wife and I to this great assembly. I want to thank God and give glory to him in the precious name of Jesus. The reason why we are here tonight is relationship. I am not here in the way people will see it as coming to minister, but to share fellowship. With all the saints through the platform created by his servant, my one very wonderful co laborer over decades, as he has mentioned, God has kept all of us together. It appears in different directions, but one in the spirit. The whole essence of creation is relationship. You can never enjoy life without value for relationship. We are not always here, but we are connected in the spirit. Strong for that matter, even to our families. Again, Pastor Paul and his dear wife, we value you, we love you, and we thank God for your lives. And we thank God for your family and for the great work that God is doing in this place and for great impact all across the globe. Greater grace upon you in Jesus' name. Please help me give Jesus a big hand in celebration of his name and of his servants. The theme of this conference, as already known, is be strong in the Lord. Say with me, I'm strong in the Lord. Let heaven hear your voice very well. Make sure you hear yourself as you say it. Let all the devils tremble as you say it. I'm assigned to teach on building up strength by waiting on the Lord. Building up strength. And the Lord said unto me early this morning, go charge them to take charge. Charge them to take charge. Only those who are charged can take charge. If you have met a drunkard before, charged with wine, Everyone who sees him coming clears off because he's in charge. Have you met any drunkard before? Or perhaps you are one? <laughs> before. <laughs> Amen. And you know, contact with the spirit is a form of checking charge. It's a form of wine. It's a be ye drunk with wine. I mean, be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, in the world of wine, they call it spirit. And they are in percentages. There is 5% alcohol, 10%, 30 And it shows in the ones who use them. Amen. <laughs> if you take five, ten percent, your eyes will be turning. If you take a little bit above it, your steps will be missing. That means that spirit has entered into you and is now controlling you. 
Then if you take a little more, um, every giant you see becomes like a dwarf before you. You can fight just anybody. Now, that's why spiritually our disposition varies depending on how drunk you are in the spirit. So tonight, I release the wine of the spirit upon you. So when we say be strong, we mean be drunk. Be drunk in the spirit. This subject matter, I want to appreciate God for his servant, for leading us in this team, is a most critical subject that we need, particularly ministers. We behave too cowardly. We behave too intimidated by circumstances of life that we are not able to pursue and achieve God's purpose for our lives. Most of us behave like the tribe called Ephraim. In Psalm 78 verse 9, armed with weapons, the children of Israel being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Beginning from now, no devil will scare you out of God's plan for your life. The Lord told me, don't just teach, prophesy. Tonight, I prophesy strength into you. Somebody shout, I receive it. Now, you see, when you meet with teachers, they feel your head. But when you meet with practitioners, they fire your heart. There are people you meet, you can't escape the arrow of the fire they carry. I'm speaking to you here tonight as one who has experienced the strength of the Lord in pursuit of purpose, in pursuit of vision. Receive strength right now. So may I receive it? He said the spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. So as you are hearing the word tonight, you are not just hearing sound, you are hearing power. You are hearing life. You are receiving what it takes to go to make it happen. In 1989, I was privileged to be in a minister's conference like this. Way back in Benin City. Under God's servant of blessed memory, the lion himself, Benson Idawusa. I saw in that conference how he would command rain to stop and rain stopped. Something entered into me. Then I was pastoring in Meduguri. And those of you who know that region, it takes time for rain to come. That was sometimes in April or May. I can't remember precisely. And I got to service that evening upon arrival. And I whispered to my wife, as it rained here, she said no. When it was my turn to take the microphone, I said to the people, wherever you are, within 24 hours, get ready, rain is coming. Ah. After the service, the deacons called me. They said, sir, this kind of statement should not be made in the open. <laughs> I was literally drunk. And there was a young lady in the church who believed this so much, she got back home and told the father, our pastor said, within 24 hours there will be rain. You know, faith does not get itself limited to title. 20 hours to that time, or after that time, rain fell according to the word. I got the spirit, the strength in my heart. I decree that from tonight, strength, strength of the Holy Spirit come upon you. Therefore, tonight, you will not only be taught, but be touched. 
you will not only be enlightened but be empowered you will not only be educated but be endowed you will not only be informed but you'll be transformed every cheeky art in ministry will give way to lion's heart and let me tell you something please you know this dome in which we are was not built by money it was built by strength of heart. Anywhere you are, please hear this very well. This dome wasn't built with money. Or rather by money. <laughs> Amen. I know what I'm talking about because I was watching the process as the time went by. In the same way, strange things shall be happening to every one of us in our ministry. The Spirit tells me that our individuals here, there are certain visions that God has given to you. You have not been able to even dare it, talk less of encountering and running after it. I release upon you right now strength of heart to be able to resist. Now, if you check the scriptures very well, you will discover that this statement and the like, be strong, is the final charge that God gives to people in ministry. The final charge. After everything God has said to you about your ministry, the final charge is be strong. Be strong. You don't need strength to be called but you need strength to accomplish God's purpose for your life. God does not call the strong. He calls the weak to give him strength in pursuit of his purpose. He didn't call us because we are strong, but he gave us strength to be able to accomplish what he called us for. For by strength shall no man prevail, according to scriptures. For brethren, you see your calling. It is not according to those who are strong, according to those who are wise, but he called those who are weak to make them strong. He called those who are foolish to make them wise. He didn't call you and I because we are strong, but he called us as weak to make us strong. He called us as weak to make us strong. Say with me, I receive strength. Say it again, I receive strength. Be strong in the Lord is the final charge. So every divine calling that God makes, we need strength to accomplish it. Look at the case of Joshua, for instance. In Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 28, God said to Moses, but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him for he shall go over before the people and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou seest charge him encourage him strengthen him and that's what this conference is all about we have been called to come across the globe to receive strength charge him we all know that the performance of any battery depends on the charge on it. We know in our computer system, you may have different program loaded into it, but if, it is, if the system is not charged, it is empty. No matter the brightness of your vision, if you are not charged with strength, you cannot accomplish it. Therefore, on this ground, I declare renewed strength for everyone to perform our purposes. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said to Joshua himself, like we're all familiar, in Joshua chapter 1 from verse 5, down the line, the Lord said to Joshua, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. It's a decree. It is established. God is not expecting that anyone should be able to confront you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. But under this one condition, be strong. Verse 6, be strong. 
be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Be strong. Say with me, I'm strong. Say it again, I'm strong. I release a renewed strength upon everyone here tonight in the name of Jesus. To Gideon, who was hiding in the farm, in Judges chapter 6, verse 14, he said to Gideon, go in this your might. Go in this your might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? I have already given you what it takes, but be strong. Go in the might of what I'm saying to you. Paul said to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, This charge give I unto you. This charge. This charge. In the military before the commander leads the army in their various units and battalion, he gives them final charge. Weapons does not save. It is hearty charge that saves. He gives them charge. Come on, boys, are you ready? And the answer, we are ready. And he takes them in a song. When soldiers are singing, you'll know that they have taken wine. Whether the wine in the physical or wine in the charge that they receive from their master, from their commander. Their eyes turn red when they get charged. That's why when you are charged, by the power of the Holy Ghost. No devil stands on your way. You know, devils are very careful about believers. They know your capability. But they appraise you from afar to see your disposition. They check how your eyes look. They check how your moves are before they can come close to you. Your disposition determines whether the devil can confront you or not. Therefore, be strong. Say with me, I'm strong. Say it again, I'm strong. Say it again, I'm strong. <laughs> he said to Timothy again, Paul the Apostle in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, be strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see from this passage that grace is not for weaklings. Be strong in the grace. The grace is there to work, but be strong. Take hold of it. When Goliath was making noise, and many of them are around us, they will keep making noise. David dissected the problem of the entire army. And hear what he said in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. When he stood before Saul, he said, let no man's heart fail because of him. Heart failure is utter failure. Once your heart fails, on any subject, on any pro project, you have already failed. That's why God reserves it as the final charge. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistines. The soldiers were armed. David was not harmed. Yet he said he will go. The soldiers, beginning with Saul, were hiding. When Goliath made noise, Nobody could answer him. But David with his strong heart said, I will go. He was operating on the scriptures from Deuteronomy chapter 20. From verse 1. When thou go to war before your enemies and you see horses and certainly you will see horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. Say me, I'm not afraid of them. Now, this is where we need to deal with ourselves. This subject matter is not just about bullface. It's about courageous heart. You see, there's a difference between boldness and courage. Boldness means to confront. Courage means to be resilient, to stay, even when things seem not to be working. There are many people who attempt, very few people stay on. That's why you find that some people after one year in ministry or five years in ministry, they give up. You need 
resilience. You need the ability to stay on. When you see horses and chariots, thou shalt not fear. Your heart shall be strong. Say with me, my heart is strong. Say it again, my heart is strong. You will never turn back from the face of any battle anymore. In the precious name of Jesus. Why are we talking about being strong? Because ministry can be likened to a race. And there is no weakling that can run in a race. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. You need strength to run. You need strength to run. Know ye that those which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize. So run, run. Remember in Habakkuk chapter 2, write the vision. Make it plain. That he may run. That he may run. Joel chapter 2 from verses 1 to 7, he talks about the great army. They are runners. Ministry is a call to run. Lazy people cannot succeed in ministry, but you need strength to run. Ministry can also be likened to warfare, requiring strength to fight and to conquer. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10, if you faint in the days of adversity, it's because your strength is too small. You need strength to fight. You need strength to fight. You need to give up this cheeky attitude and approach to ministry if one succeeds in it. Ministry is work. But work requires strength to achieve. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Work out your salvation. Work out your salvation. Call to ministry does not produce result automatically. You work it out. You work it out. Day and night, you work it out. You had a little while ago, Pastor Paul was talking about times we talk, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. That shall do is still maintaining now. There are many ministers, their eyes are always sleepy. That's why vision becomes slippery. Hi, hi, hi. Sleepy eyes will result in slippery ends. Many, many people have lost their vision. What remains with them is just the word content. The value and the virtue is off. Many are weak in their bodies. Any small thing, I want to rest. You preach one service on Sunday and you take vacation for two days. If that's the way our fathers ran it, we will not meet it here. Up till this moment, my earlier time to sleep is 2 a.m., sometimes 3, sometimes 4. And I still wake up early in the morning. Where did I get it from? Midnight prayer takes place here every night. And yet we talk, 6 a.m., how many hours did you sleep? Thank God for all the scientific and biological exhortation and encouragement that a man should sleep eight hours in the night and you as a pastor, you go to sleep because that's what they told you. Check Jesus shall do. Night, it will be on the mountain. Daytime, it will be on the street. Going from villages to towns to cities, preaching and healing people. Yet you are wishing that you will be like Jesus. You don't wish it, you keep his kind of schedule by strength. And the child works strong in the spirit. He works strong in the spirit. Jesus was not casual. How do you think he will be casual in ministry and succeed? If that is the kind of schedule you want to maintain, I admonish you to resign. Tell Jesus, I've done enough. I'm going to look for something else to do. Call to ministry is work. It's work. There are many books inside you. You are not working at it because of procrastination. Oh, I will do it later. Oh, I will do it later. Tonight, I see strength coming into you. I see strength coming into you. 
Strength to commence for those who are yet to commence. Strength to continue for those who commence. And strength to complete for those who have continued. If it's you I'm talking about, say I receive it. Ministry assignment is not for weaklings. But for eagles who are ready to face the storms. There is no easy way to do ministry. It is all by facing the storms that comes our way. If you are not ready for it, your wings will be broken by the winds of life. But I know there is a change for someone here tonight. So practically speaking, to triumph and thrive in ministry, you need strength of heart. Strength of heart. That you'll be strengthened in the inner man. According to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, be strengthened in the inner man. That he will grant unto you, according to the riches of glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Some people look strong on their face, but they are weak in their heart. It's not by look. It's by expression of the heart. It's not about loud speaking or noise making. It's about exhibition of strength from your heart. There is healing for someone here tonight. That chicken heart shall be replaced with lion's heart. You, now, you don't only need strength of heart, you also need strength of the mind, which we refer to as sound mind. Jesus operated by mind. In the mind is a place of determination. That this thing must work. Never give up. This thing must work. You need sound mind. Ability to reason through. Don't be weak in your mind. Possibility thinking that if God tells you this is to be done, it can be done. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. It's not given unto us to us the spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. And thirdly, you need physical agility. Strength of heart, strength of mind, strength in the body. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. He said, wherefore, when he cometh to the world, he said, sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not, but a body as thou prepared me. No matter how anointed you are, if you carry a weak body, you cannot carry out your mission. You need strength in your body. You need empowerment for your physical body. May I request you to lift up your hand, please. I decree strength for pursuit for everyone here tonight. <laughs> Whatever your spirit man has received from the Lord, receive the physical strength to pursue it right now. strength in your body. But there are many, many ministers who are permanently living with drugs. I mean medicine. Is it sin to use medicine? No. But you can be free because they said to Jesus, physician, heal yourself. Without physical strength, you'll be limited. So you need to be strong in your body. Strong in your body. Many believers, I mean many ministers, have become a victim of influence of sicknesses and diseases. They read too many things on the internet that weakens their body. I'm not against medicine. No. As a matter of fact, if I meet somebody sick, I pay for your bill. I pay your medical bill so that you can be alive to learn faith to, be, to win. When I see somebody who said I won't use medicine, I check him very well. I can't see faith in him. I call doctor. I say, do you have your injection there? Please help me give him two jabs. <laughs> Let him stay alive. So we can teach him faith. I will not use medicine. I will not use medicine. That's not faith. 
when faith is inside you, you will not be arguing. You will just manifest. So I'm not against it. But I'm telling us, according to scriptures, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, it tells us to be careful. Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. In the face of faith, science is false. In the face of faith. When faith is at work, it makes a mess of science. Our host will know what I'm talking about, even though a medical practitioner. But he knows that when faith is at work, science is false. We have had diverse testimonies upon this altar of how science is messed up. Science is fact. Faith is truth. Facts. They tell you in medical field, go and seek another doctor's opinion. They make references to themselves. But the truth does not make reference to anybody. Once God says it, it stands. To anyone who may be suffering any infirmity here as a minister, you are meant to be a flaming fire. I decree that the fire of God will consume all of them right now. <laughs> Wave your hand and say bye-bye to sickness and diseases. You will be strong to fulfill God's purpose for your life. You will be strong to fulfill your ministry. It pains my heart when we hear stories of any of our co-laborers depart. Because Jesus said, the harvest is much and the laborers are few. So the departure of any laborer is not in our favor as it were. That's why I'm praying this prayer. I'm not despising any one of us who may have any infirmity in our bodies. But I'm saying this in the anger of the Holy Ghost. It ought not to be. It ought not to be. Again, I declare if and there's anyone here with any infirmity in the body, I decree your total healing now. Somebody shout, I am strong. Shout it again, I am strong. A pastor met me this morning who was sharing his testimony. He said, I've been so challenged in my health. But I listened to your teaching and I decided that from that moment, it's all over. Now it's about five months. His health began to recover. Began to recover. When faith enters, science vacates. And then that's come to every physical infirmity here tonight. Amen. Somebody say louder, amen. amen. But the strength we are talking about is according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Can you see that again? Finally, that is in conclusion. This is the peak of the matter. No matter the weapons you possess, be strong. From verses 11 to verse 18, it tells us about the various weapons. But weapons are of no effect without strength. That's why you, some people, they carry gun and yet they are arrested with gun in their hand. Some people carry gun but they can't shoot for fear. The sound of the shooting scares him himself. Everything we need is available to us, but you need strength of heart. Strength to take a step. Strength to move towards challenges. Do you know that from here, you'll be sending testimonies of your new moves by the strength of the Lord. Whatever has been scaring you will no longer scare you. I said they will no longer scare you. Some of us here are due to take over certain cities and towns and spread. But fear, fear, where will the money come from? Fear, where will I get the people to do it? Fear, do I have the physical energy? From today, strange move of the Holy Ghost will be working in you. Another loud amen from someone. 
be strong in the Lord. Why? Because he is the fountain and custodian of strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. As thou not known. Remember, our subject matter is building up strength by waiting on the Lord. And we are coming to it right now. As thou not known. As thou not heard. That the everlasting God. The everlasting God. Is ever and is lasting. The creator of the hands of the heart. He fainteth not. Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He fainteth not. He giveth power to the faint like you and I. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the young who are known for strength shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But this is where the secret of strength is, among others. They that wait or associate or relate with the Lord shall renew their strength. The company you keep determines the influence on your life. In the process of waiting on the Lord, they will mount up with wings as eagle, like their father God eagle. And when they have waited on the Lord, they will receive strength to run. And not be weary. They shall walk. And they will not know what it means to faint. May I submit therefore. If you want to succeed in your walk. For God. Develop deeper relationship. Walk with God. This is where many many ministers make mistakes. Their walk with God is questionable. My relationship with God first. First. My relationship with God first. Sometimes I say some things that surprises people. For instance, I don't pray for success. I don't pray for success. I walk with the God of success and he gives me overflow of success. Is it wrong to pray? No. I'm talking to you from the perspective of the revelation I have about him. I don't pray, oh God, go with me as I'm going. Go with me as I'm going. I listen to him and follow him. I follow him. And as I follow him, goodness and mercy follows me. The God you relate with is the God you carry. In relationship, something rubs on you. That's why when you learn the secret of waiting on the Lord, you will gain access to his order of strength. I don't study to preach. I study to know God. And the people that do know their God shall become strong. So our number one assignment is to know God. To know God. To know God. If you know God, you will not be stranded among men. Waiting on God. Whenever we hear this, many of us quickly think it's all about fasting. It's only a part of it. It's not all of it. It also involves prayer. This time around, not praying for things, but fellowshipping and relating with God. It also includes studying the world. I know a great part of all of this must have been communicated to us in this conference. But the summary is this. We must learn to know God. You see, there is calling and there is the caller. Many of us run and pursue our calling and forget the caller. Many 
many, many of us in ministry, we know about God, but we don't actually know God. There are two different things. You can know about New York and you have never been there. Through geography. Many of us are geographical ministers and not practical ministers. We must learn to wait on God. We must learn to be quiet before God. We must learn to imbibe God in us. Whenever we are waiting on him, there are even times you are fasting, you shouldn't pray over anything, but just be still in God's presence. Let him walk on you. Let him touch your tongue while you are talking to him. Let him reflect his face on you when you are talking to him in prayer. If you study the time that Moses waited on the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights in, on the mountain, what was his prayer? Lord, show me the way. Because once you know his ways, you will command his acts. Lord, let your presence go with me. Lord, let your glory fill my life. By the time he returned, he was a changed person. You can't truly meet with God and be jettisoned among men. When your face meets with the face of God, no devil can face you. Meeting with God, relating with God, is what reflects in everything that we do. Some years back, I took a flight from Kano to Meduguri. And when I took my seat, an air host came and met me. He said, sir, can I know you? I said, what about that? He said, when you entered, something entered with you. I said, I'm not surprised. The person I carry goes with me everywhere I go. Ministers are meant to be reflectors of God. Ministers are meant to be God carriers. Ministers are meant to be God's representative everywhere they go. Ministers are supposed to be imposing God's glory and power everywhere they appear. But without meeting with God, you cannot reflect God. Without talking with God, his voice cannot come into your voice. I always tell people humorously, until you lose your voice in prayer, your voice cannot be heard among men. No. My wonderful collaborators will tell you about that. They prayed until they lost their voice. And God now gave them his voice. Our noise is too much. Let's go for his voice. We are too many in the field... Let us stand up and let God's voice be heard through us. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now listen to me very carefully before we begin to round up. What are the things you should know while waiting on the Lord? Number one, you should know God as your caller. If you don't know your caller, you will be pushed to a corner. Know God as your caller. Who is it that called me? When he calls you, he takes you from the corner to the center. When he calls you, he takes you from obscurity to limelight. When he calls you, he makes you the center of attraction. When he calls you, you don't struggle to be known by men and among men. When he called Abraham, he made a show of him. When he called Jeremiah, he made a show of him. Number two, you should know him as your sender. As your sender. If you don't know God as your sender, you'll be sent back by men and circumstances. Moses knew God as his sender. God told him, I am sending you. Exodus chapter 3 verse 10, verse 12, verse 14, verse 15. 
John chapter 1 verse 6 a man sent from God you can't be sent from God and be driven back by men sent from God you know why things are happening on this ground at dunamis because God sent a man you can't fight a man that said God sent this is what you should know in any nation and any city where you are don't be afraid don't be intimidated by people who are making noise don't be worried when they are castigating you they are only trying to intimidate you to keep silent you need to know your sender unfortunately many people don't know who sent them and you need to be bold about it to tell people everywhere god sent me Those whom God sent are never afraid to declare it. If you can't tell your congregation that God sent you, I, get, I, 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 I query your calling. Those who are sent by God are usually bold to declare, it. God sent me. And believe me, you will have no one following you if you cannot declare that God sent you. Number three, you need to know God as your defender. If you don't know him as your defender, you will lose your defense. God told Jeremiah in chapter 1 verse 17. He said, because I'm the one who sent you, don't look at their faces. Otherwise you'll be confounded before them. I will make you a strong defense city. Know God as your caller. Know him as your sender. Know him as your defender. Know him as your back end. The one whose presence is with you always. Say loud amen. amen. Say loud amen. amen. Say louder amen. amen. May your heart encounter unique strength to make you to go and fulfill purpose. In the precious name of Jesus. So every time you feel confused about your calling, go back to your caller. Because strength is in levels and measures. You need to go for renewal. You need to go for renewal. Most of the time I spend with God in the night is principally to refresh myself. That's what Jesus did. Every night he will go to refresh himself and at daytime he will perform works, the works that God has sent him. Go for renewal of strength. Because as you do, according to scriptures, you will not know weariness, you will not know weakness. Spend time with God. Spend time with God in study of his word, in prayer, in fasting. And many young people today whose fasting is to 12, 12, 12 noon. Some when they are fasting, they take tea. They call it fasting. Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Whatever a man sows, that's what he shall reap. Today, people look at me and they say, I've had it wait. Find out what it was 20 years ago. Skinny, bones shooting out. Because of the need to build up strength. To build up strength. The strength you don't generate, you cannot utilize. Build up strength. If you want to fast, fast. If you don't want to fast, don't fast. Don't use new generation method to claim that you are fasting. If you want to pray, pray. Really pray. Renew your strength. Especially praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. But he below, building up yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude verse 20. I mean, yeah, Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Build up strength. Build up strength. Even Jesus had to spend time waited on the Lord. The child worked strong in the spirit. Luke 2 40. And he returned in the power of the spirit. And his fame spreaded abroad. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 and verse 37. 
his fame spread it abroad. As I round up, why must you be strong? Why must you be strong? Why do you need to be strong? Number one is to overcome stagnation and limitations. Many people have reached their peak in ministry. You need to be strong to break the barriers. You need to be strong. We know the stories of the four lepers who were stagnated. They were looking at each other. Nothing was happening until they advised themselves to move. Now, you see, one evidence of strength is movement. Movement. Strong people are never stagnated. They move. They are moving in doing one thing or the other. You told everybody God gave you a television ministry. What have you done about it? Move. You want to build. Move. Go and price land. Find out how much is land. They take you to a place. They say it's 50 million. Put your hand in your pocket and tell them I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. The proof of strength is movement. Movement. Do you think this dome will have been built without movement? First of all, how much is land? Where can we get land? You should ask questions. Don't say, I'm waiting for somebody to give us gift of land. Are you a beggar? God did not call, call you to be a beggar ministry. Go and find out. And when you get the land, go and buy blocks. Go and buy cement. If it's two bags, you can buy. Buy it and put it on the ground buy stones and start harassing the ground that I'm coming. The proof of strength is movement. Strong people don't sit down. The proof of strength is movement. If you are not moving, you are weak. I'm saying this to all of us, therefore, anything you claim God has told you, start moving towards it. Start moving towards it. You say God has called you to, an to be an evangelist. What crusade have you held? Stop waiting for instruments. Don't say, you see, um, um, Dr. Paul has a crusade. You see many speakers. Find out where he started from. I know where he started from. Evangelism begins with your mouth. When God sees that you have ministered to enough people that your voice cannot carry again, he will give you speaker. He will give you microphone. He will give public address system. But go and use your You mean you can't speak to 30 people without microphone? Unfortunately, today many people claim that they can't start ministry until they have instruments. I was a pastor of 60 people in a sitting room, in a sitting room bungalow. Because that was what money could afford. Three bedroom flat. My wife is a witness. The sitting room was our church. No money to buy bench. I mean to buy chairs, bed bench. I was preaching every day to the maximum full of the house. The sitting room could see 60 people. When the people couldn't hear me again, they began to talk about how can we buy public address system? What do you need it for? If you are not moving, you are not strong. The proof of strength is a movement. Make a move against stagnation. Get back home from here. Go and start doing something. The lepers moved and the entire city moved. As they were moving, the spirit was driving them away in the tweet light. If you don't move, nothing will move. If you don't move, nothing will move. You can only be wishing. Wishing is not equal to walking. Say loud, amen. amen. Why must you be strong? You must be strong to break new grounds. To break new grounds. It takes people who are strong to break new ground. Why must you be strong? Number three, you must be strong to confront oppositions like David did. David had no weapon, but he had a heart. As Goliath was making noise, David was moving towards him. Don't forget, the proof of strength is movement. He moved towards Goliath, and God moved ahead of him. God moves 
only for people who move. It is your movement that initiates God's movement. Move. Move if you want God to move. Move. Move towards your vision. Move towards your purpose. Why must you be strong? You need to be strong to embrace challenges like Samson. The strength of Samson was always aroused when the Philistines make noise. Judges chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. The lion roared at him. And then suddenly the Spirit of God came upon him. The Spirit of God is waiting for you to face challenges. Stop hiding. They bring the sick to you. You pray over them. They tell you somebody is dead. Tell them let's go there. And pray over the dead. If the first one doesn't wake up, the, second one doesn't wake up, the third one will wake up. <laughs> Embrace challenges. Every opportunity you have to be called to do something moves God into action. I never saw somebody healed of headache until I started praying for those who have headache. I never saw somebody eyes open before until I moved towards the blind person. Blind eyes, be open! And I turned. <laughs> then I heard the sound from the crowd. The eyes are open. I never saw a leper cured before until I started praying for the leper. Move. Embrace challenges. Let it be your desire and excitement. When you see challenges coming, be smiling. Don't run away from challenges. Be strong. Say me, I'm strong. Say it again, I'm strong. Say it again, I'm strong. Stop looking for who to blame for your predicament. The growth of one church is not the reason for the stagnation of your church. You know how many churches are in this city? One day I made the calculation, sir, Pastor Paul. And I discovered that all the churches here in the FCT put together are not more than 5% of the entire population. So why are we fighting ourselves? Go somewhere. Go and plant new churches there. And see the amazing wonders. Stop struggling that somebody didn't come to your church, somebody went to another church, somebody left your church. You should find out why they left. Find out why they left. You may need to examine yourself. Maybe you are no longer feeding them. Maybe you are no longer meeting their needs. Will a sheep ever die with a shepherd? When the sheep is not well fed, it will follow other sheep to somewhere else. <laughs> Say, Lord, amen. Well, I decree new strength for everyone here. Please stand to your feet. I decree new strength for everyone here. I decree new strength for everyone here. I decree new strength for everyone here. Raise your voice and begin to declare, I'm charged to go and take charge. Raise your voice. Be declaring it. Speak strength to yourself. Speak strength to yourself right now. Everybody, speak strength. Speak strength to yourself. Speak strength. Speak strength to yourself. Speak strength. I'm no longer a weakling. Speak strength. Speak strength. Speak strength. Speak strength. Speak strength. I'm strong in the Lord. Thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Let me quickly say this please. I believe we may have been told, discover your area of strength and focus on it. Twice now, close people have met me and said, please can you call Pastor Paul in Nietzsche to pray for us. So why not? Up till about two, three weeks ago, I called this place. My wife called the place and said, please tell pastor that we are sending so-so person. The person believes in you. Did I not pray for him? I prayed for him. But he requested. Maybe there's something he saw in him that is not in me. <laughs> Amen. And as usual, he said, why not? Let them come. Let them come. Because that's what they are there for. We are loaded and packaged with different virtues. 
there is no need to castigate anybody. There is no need to bring down anybody because you want to rise. There is nobody to. There is no need to stop anybody from going somewhere. I have never queried anyone for leaving the church I pastor. I just tell myself maybe my ministry is over to him. And I see some of them in some churches where I go to, and I see greet them very joyfully, excitedly. I hope you are doing well. Just make sure the most important thing is that you make heaven. I can't pass to everybody. Pastor Paul can't pass to everybody. None of us can pass to everybody. Identify your area of strength. I can't jump like Pastor Paul is jumping. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm saying this because, please permit me, I'm shooting two, three minutes beyond my time. There is a lot of competition going on in ministry today. You are not called to complete, but to complement. You are not called to be famous, but to be faithful. You are not called to be popular, but to be peculiar. Stop seeking popularity. Stop having stomach ache when someone is making progress. I'm not saying this to flatter our host or to make myself feel important. There are times I just send a message. I watch the crusade in Kano. I watch the crusade in Nevada. This final night will be very great. That's my joy. I don't go on crusade. But someone is there doing it. Let's send them with goodwill. Amen. <laughs> Listen to this. My wife and I, we pray for a number of our co-laborers from time to time. We pray for them. The proof of love and commitment to your co-ministers is in your ability to pray for them. And beyond, occasionally send seeds to whatever they are doing that impresses you. We are glad this is happening. We are happy things are going on there. Stop creating stomach ache for yourself. <laughs> by reason of good things that God is using others to do. The faith dome here is not Pastor Inenche's own. It is for the entire body of Christ. It's for the glory of God. It's for our honor. It's for our pride. Everywhere we go to, we rejoice at the doings of God. It's happening everywhere, all across the globe, including in Canaan land, building mighty structures for Jesus. Everyone, except those who have to make ache, are not happy with. Why are they building? Why are they building? God sends us differently to create fear. Why are they talking about prosperity? That's why wicked people can't touch us. They don't only fear our anointing, they fear our resources. Fear our resources. They fear our resources. And there's nothing they can do about it because we didn't get our resources in crooked ways. What am I saying, brethren? Permit me for keeping you standing, Pastor Paul. I'm saying this, let competition be over. You know, how to, you know how to shake the devil? When you hear your fellow minister doing something, go there. Have an handshake and tell him we are praying for you. We are standing with you. And if you are blessed with something to offer, this is our seed. Because you can't give to somebody and still hate the person. No. Let's destroy the devil. And finally, let each person focus on his assignment. If God sent you as a prophet, stay on there. If he sent you as evangelist, stay on there. If he sends you as a pastor, as a teacher, and on different subjects. Do you know that even among prophets, there are differences? There are prophets that causes. There are prophets that weep. Like Jeremiah, he's a weeping prophet. Elijah, a killing prophet. And yet God was supporting each of them to prove that he sent them. 
Because there are people in the church, there are people around who want to kill the church that needs to be killed. So they stand up. There are prophets who teach forgiveness. There are other prophets who teach judgment. They are all doing their jobs. How do I know? God is confirming their word. God is confirming their word. Hallelujah! There are those who teach success. There are those who teach healing. Don't castigate somebody. There are those who teach prosperity. Don't say, oh, every time they'll be preaching prosperity. That's what he is sent to preach. You face your own. Face your own. Face your own. Amen. <laughs> you know, in the market, there are different stalls. There are those who sell spare parts. There are those who sell iron rod. There are those who sell cement. Every customer goes to where he has the good being sold. So display your good. Sell your good. Preach your message well. Stay on your assignments. Instead of focusing your eyes on somebody else's assignment. Otherwise, stomach ache will trouble you too much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! No one has the authority to judge another person's ministry. No. God didn't give that authority to anybody. Say, sir. Aha. Thank you. Stay on your assignment. Stay on your job. Make a mark. There is no calling that is inferior. Every, somebody says, you see, the reason why I don't see miracles is because I'm not a teacher. That's not true. I teach every day. In the church where I minister this month, we had a record of over 250 healing testimonies through teaching, through teaching, through teaching. Don't say, see, I'm not, I'm not an evangelist. That's why I do. Faith, Jesus was teaching and preaching and healing. Don't say, see, the reason why we are not prosperous is because we are not teaching prosperity. It's not true. Jesus didn't teach prosperity when the woman brought an alabaster oil and poured it on his head and poured it on his feet. Be faithful in your assignment. Everything you need will meet you on the way. Be faithful in your assignment. Everything you need will meet you on the way. Don't look at this ministry and say, oh, can you see why God is so partial? Find out where they were 25 years ago. I was there. I was there. I was there in their office when there was no air conditioner. I was there in their office when the table will require balance with a bottleneck. Like my own when I was in Meduguri. I wanted to make wood, I mean table. I told the brethren in the church, I said, can you make a table for me? He said, where is the money? I said, don't you have off-cut wood in your, in your site? So they went and used off-cut wood. By the time they put the table on the ground, one leg was this, other. So I put bottleneck to shock the leg. Come on, table, you must stand strong. You must stay well. Now lift up your hand, please. Permit me for the time. Lift up your hand. Be strong! Be strong! Be strong! Please let me request you, Pastor Paul. Let's pray this prayer together. Be strong. Be strong. That's what God told me to tell you. I'm not just, just saying it, I'm prophesying it on you. Be strong! Now everybody begin to pull down every weakness in your life. Spiritual weakness, mental weakness, physical weakness. Tear them down right now. Raise your voice. This is altar of strength. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build up yourself against every work of the enemy. I am strong. 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 No more weakness for me. I am strong. I cannot be weak. I am strong. 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 Strong spirit. Strong in my mind. Strong in my imagination. Strong. Thanks 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. This is very important. No assumption. One day I was ministering and I made another call. And I saw a pastor relation of mine came to the altar to give his life to Jesus. Do you know there are not only backsliding believers, there are backsliding pastors who live with a lot of mess on their telephone, which of course is meant for good, but has become Satan's device in their hand. All kinds of stuff. Secret sins. Should someone be here, don't mind who is next to you, because whatever you cover today will be open tomorrow. You know you are not born again. Whether you are just a passerby that attended this conference. You may not even be a minister. Or maybe you are. But you discover that your salvation is not sure. Because we will go to heaven not on the account of ministry call. But on the account of salvation. Sal I want to maintain my Christianity. I won't mind leaving a church of 10,000 to go and pastor a church of 30 people in my village if that is what it takes to maintain my faith. Should there be anyone here tonight you know you are not born again, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Opportunity is here for you tonight. Wherever you are, I'd like you to take this step and come to the altar here. Wherever you are, wherever you are, quickly do that, wherever you are. It's a large assembly, it's a large congregation. But you can run down quickly. we we'll just give you one minute or two. Run down. I want to be born again. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Keep clapping for the Lord as we receive such individuals. Or you are backsliding. You want to be restored back to the faith. You want to be restored back to the faith. You don't want to find yourself in hell at the end of the day. If you are coming, quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Thank you, Jesus. I love you and I Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me admonish us again as ministers. If you make altar call and you see three people saved, that's celebration. Because everyone rejoices over one soul. So if there are two or ten or fifteen, then the rejoicing should multiply. Because no one has power to bring any man that God did not draw. Thank you, Jesus. Now, every one of us at the altar here, let me request you to please bow your heads. If you can, lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand and say this prayer loud. Say with me, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me. Right now, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. From now, as I believe, I am saved, I am rescued from the power of darkness to serve the living God. Thank you for saving me. I receive your joy and peace. I receive your salvation. I receive power to go and say no more. In Jesus' precious name. Heavenly Father, we receive these souls into your kingdom and we declare that they are saved eternally in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please open your eyes. Our church officials, Yes, council and officers, please go ahead with the people. Can you give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise? Let's remain standing one minute and let's appreciate God's servant for this most impactful. This is like two or three messages in one. How many of you know that? About three messages in one. Thank you, sir. We are so appreciative. I want to make one or two comments while you are here. How many of you know that there are many people who are pastors but who are not Christians? Not every pastor is a Christian. 
Did you hear what he just said? At his level, he's directing people to come and see me because they ask him, I want to see him. Number two, not once, not twice. I follow the Kano crusade. I follow this crusade. This is my seed for the crusade. It's not talking theory. Seed of six, zero and above. This is my seed for the crusade. Please, I want us to learn. Please. Please. This tension is not necessary. This contention is not necessary. I was only three or four years in ministry when he invited me for the first time to Kaduna over 20 something years, I mean something years ago to minister there, to preach under his, in his altar. Very free. I believe that something will happen from here. There are ministries that we send seed to every month for crusades. Every month from here. We are into crusades. But we are sending them seed monthly. Sir, thank you for the example you represent to us. We appreciate you. Um, we. Can you just pray for him? Lord, bless him. Will you do that? Paul the Apostle said, pray for me. Most times we don't pray for those who bless us, those who teach us, those who impart us. Use one word. Father, bless him. Lay your hands upon him. Cause, cause his days to be as his strength. Father, engrace him with fresh oil in this journey as he proceeds. Go on ahead, open your mouth and pray. Pray, 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 pray. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for your hand on his life. Thank you for your impact on his life. Thank you for fresh grace. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.